before my friends. What we did in the last tutorial, part two of this series, was we created the MySQL database and we made sure we connected to it. We FTP'd files that were a quick test. In the end of video number two, or part number two of this series, I was going to take these two parts here, gather their name and email address in a form, and parse that data to a MySQL to this MySQL database that we connected to. I'm going to combine those two things into one file, call it index.php, and it's going to be the index file inside of the newsletter folder. So all you have to do is navigate to that newsletter folder. No particular file inside of it, just navigate to that folder and then the form will will come up. That's how we're going to make it. So let's open up Dreamweaver here and here's our connect to MySQL dot PHP file and obviously mine has my real connection data in it on the server and I don't want to show you my connection data because you'll all hack my site I don't care. It's create a new file. File new go to uh, PHP let's get rid of you, I mean you can have your document set up any way you need to I'm just gonna do a basic example so there's HTML tag and then it closes down here there's a body tag opening and closing title tag and the head tag inside of the body tag I'm gonna add a form I have it pre-made and I'm going to explain it okay here's my form now before I start explaining that I'm going to throw a little title in there. It's more appropriate for this document. Subscribe to our newsletter. Great. So I have the head tag inside of it is the title tag, and the HTML tags wrapped around everything there. Let's save this as index.php. It's going to have a PHP extension on it already, so just name it index, save. Okay, now this form, which we're using to gather the name and the email address of the people that we want to put in our subscription list in our database. This form is two fields, one name, one email, and then there's a submit button down here. And in just a moment, a little further on in the video, we're going to see exactly how this thing looks rendered in the browser. If you want to fast forward to that spot, take a look at it, how it looks in the browser, feel free, come back, whatever. But anyhow, so this form has a you'll see some things that you don't normally see in forms here and I stuck the legend tag in there the legend HTML element which is used in form making and you can use that to put a nice graphic display rounded edges around your form and everything and I'll sh it, you'll see it just, 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 just go look okay so the first thing in the form is we open the form tag and we set some attributes and values inside of it and we close the form tag here on line 18 there and in the opening tag we set a style of the 440 pixel width and then in the action which is the file that it's going to call to parse this data I just sunk in uh, server self which makes it parse to itself no matter what the file is named if you use this in the action it will parse to itself. Okay, and the method is post. Now here's the field set, the field set style, and the field set tag closes right here. So you can see it kind of goes around all of the fields and the legend tag. And it's not a very necessary thing, but you'll see the way my form is designed, and you'll say, hey, that's pretty nice looking. Uh, and it's all standard HTML tags and elements that you can use to accomplish that. So basically it's all it is, two fields, a button, and inside of the fields value I'm echoing out a name variable and an email variable. And I'm going to put some more PHP in the top of this file so these variables will be initialized and everything is be, will be great. So now you understand how the form is set up and you'll see it in the browser in just a moment and I'm going to add the PHP to the top of this file that's going to parse when somebody presses submit and add that information to the database or do error checking and stuff like that. Okay, here I go. I'm going to break line there or bring that tag down one line and pop in my P 
PHP code. You'll see it's 34 lines from the opening PHP tag to the closing PHP tag and it sits right above that HTML page that we just made, HTML section of the page. Altogether, 54 lines. You can't beat that. It's too easy. You can go into Design View and look at it right now. But it's going to be rendered a lot different. The form will be in the browser. It's nothing like what it's going to look like. It's sort of what it'll look like. But uh, let's discuss this PHP now. The first thing we do is initialize on line 2 and 3, we're initializing actually 2, 3, and 4, we're initializing three variables name, email, and message to user which are going to be used as output in the page so you have to initialize them in some environments you'll get warnings or errors if you don't initialize those not on my environment but I threw it in there because there's a lot of different environments and we want to cover most, most of the bases that we can while we're at it okay so on line 5 we have an if condition and if and else condition statements are used to create logic and kind of check things before certain other things happen so that's what we're using it for here so in this line we say if the post variable of name from the name field in that form down here if that posted variable is not equal to nothing so basically this form if they press submit without putting their name in nothing at all is going to happen and nothing at all should happen if you want to code yours out to where it says please add your name you can do that just fine but I made it to where if they put their name but don't put the email then they'll get an error warning saying please supply your email so here in the code you'll see right here if they post the name and there's a value in it we're going to run this section of code if there's no name value it just gets bypassed it doesn't run so if there's a name value we connect to the database we connect to the MySQL database through our include file and then we add uh, or we take the the posted variables from the form and we create local PHP variables that we can then use more easily in our script and on line 12 we established a MySQL query and in that query there's an SQL line right here some SQL string that is set to select all from the newsletter database table where the email is equal to this person's email that they're trying to put in then we check num rows or we set the num rows into a variable by using the mysql num rows function on that SQL query now this has a value of how many this finds so all we have to do is check and see we're going to use that a little further down in the script right here but first we run a condition to check and see if the email is empty or not this line right here is saying if there is no email variable set or if no value in that email variable then we output a, a message to the user saying please type an email address and we even put their name in there just to be cool so it'll say please type an email address Adam if I forget to put my email address in but if I do put an email address it won't run this code so I would have put my name and my email address it's gonna run right past this code and not even run it because this evaluation would return false if this returns true then this runs and don't worry if I'm kinda losing you I'm going to step back, look at the whole 34 lines, and run it down real quick again. Okay, so if there is no email variable set, if there's no value, we give them a message of kind of like an error output saying, please type an email address. And then, if that condition doesn't meet true here, this expression does not meet true, then we run on to this one here that says, else if the num rows is greater than zero we output a message to user of email is already in the system that means that email address would have already been in your database and you don't want to have multiple email addresses the same email 
and you can even set the the field type or the field in the database to unique so there can only be one and each one has to be unique but this is a good way to check to make sure they're all going to be unique within your script and rem remember when we ran the, uh, the select query here to see how many num rows it gave out that's where we're using that evaluation there see that variable is going to show how many are in the database and if it's greater than zero we're not going to add anything we're going to tell them it's already in the system but if it is equal to zero which it should be in most cases we're going to run onto this else condition here and all of this code will run so that's how it works basically and uh, this is an SQL insert query and it has an insert into newsletter the name the email and the date time field in the database with the values of the name variable the email variable and a now timestamp and if it all fails if anything fails within this it will die and give the MySQL error after that we set the message to user to be like the success message thanks name you have been added successfully because everything went right and you'll see that we clear the name field and the email field so they empty out in the form alright down here in the script we have echo message to user you see down in the bottom in the HTML part of this this file that really doesn't show up until this PHP kind of processes and they press submit and that is rendering message to user variable right here anytime anything messes up and in the error handling of this script we print out a message to user nothing below it will run and it just goes and prints it out on the page so the way this works is using these if and else if and else conditions here it's basically those work to the meaning of the word you'd have to be kinda of dense not to understand if this is happening run this code else if this is true run this code else if this thing and this thing didn't match up and meet run this code that's it and that's uh, the main the main post check right here if the post name is not equal to empty that closes right here but all of our inner conditions are nested right here so we check to see two things gone wrong then we give an error message else we do the successful thing and put the information in the database and give them a good successful message that's how that works now let's go test it out okay so here I am on my server I'm gonna go to that directory newsletter straight to the folder not any particular file I'm just gonna navigate to that folder because the file is called index so now you can see the design that the form has using that legend tag it's pretty cool I like it it gives you a nice little professional edge over what other people are doing because not many people use that legend uh, element so now let's just press submit perfect it does nothing which it should do nothing because the person's not cooperating and putting any information in so they should expect nothing now if I put Adam let's put Adam Corey and let's put my email address actually let's forget to put my email address and press submit see nice red text please type an email address Adam Corey that's smart programming now if you go to uh, put an email address in and I'm gonna discuss some things with you at the very end about validating email addresses and I have it at the site I just put it up actually uh, let's press submit see what happens thanks Adam Corey you have been added success successfully let's go check the MySQL database through PHP my admin actually very quickly before we go check I'm gonna try and put the same name and email address in
should give me an error message. Yep, it says adamantflashbuilding.com is already in the system. It's perfect. So if I change my name and put Joe, and Joe at mycoolsite.com, submit. Thanks, Joe. You've been added successfully. Now let's go check the database. Or actually, let me show you first because I know you guys are going to be bugging me about this. All you Uber dorks saying you don't even validate an email to see if it's a correct valid email address. Well, go to my PHP course, scroll down to where it says working with strings and alphanumeric characters. Validate email addresses with PHP, Pregmatch, and Regex. Click that, and there you go. Add that to your script. And you can validate email addresses to make sure they have the proper structure that an email address should have. Here we are in PHP My Admin for the newsletter table. And I'm going to click Browse. We should have two entries in there and it's perfect. Put our timestamp in, their email address, name, and their incremented auto-incremented ID. Received. We're going to be discussing what that field is for a little bit later on. So we're going to stop this one right here and we'll pick up in the next part of the series where we can finally create the email blasting function and that's pretty much the last little bit because we've covered everything else and everything is working successfully. And these files will be available so if you guys had trouble seeing anything in the video you couldn't type the code because you missed a character in the video or whatever the code will be available the scripts for download okay so we'll see you in the next part of the series hang tight we're almost done